Okay, um, so the next uh, presentation is, is an um, example of a non-stock assessment um, project, but in fisheries. And uh, Johan's gonna present that. It's about um, software for fisheries acoustics. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna, uh, it's gonna be a pretty informal um, story about uh, how, we, um, how we went about producing our own <coughs> fisheries acoustics um, software and uh, uh, why we did it, uh, what choice we made, what we'll, what we'll do again. Um, I've done uh, that a lot with my colleague Pablo Escobar and I also put his name so that you actually stay sharp and, and, um, and listen to me for the whole talk. So. Um, so a bit of background is just like, a, as you know, fisheries acoustics, um, um, it's a field that's going to be uh, producing those numbers that you pretend to use in your models. So um, basically, I don't come from fisheries originally. Um, my background was in uh, applied mathematics and I came in New Zealand uh, six years ago and started to work in, uh, as a fisheries scientist, um, mainly focused on acoustics. So. Um, the, the thing in fisheries acoustics is that we've got a, a lot of um, overlapping with biologists as well. So there's going to be a lot of the, of the identification of marks and these sort of things that needs to go through, um, through a, a trained eye of a biologist because there's a, a big part of interpretation. Um, it means that the software that we deal have, has, have to have a quite a, a, a humanly uh, usable interface, which makes it a bit uh, hard for someone that's got um, more of a, a code approach to life, but um, uh, that was a challenge that, that we took and, and we, we're still trying to make it work. So, um, so what's ESP3? Uh, basically, that's, so that's the software that we are developing and that we've, we've been working on for a while. Uh, it's half a million uh, lines of code, which is not a lot in, in a mix of different things because uh, I'm not a software developer by trade. I'm a, I'm a mathematician with some engineering background. So um, I've done that in, in um, several languages. Uh, the team is, is a wonderful team of one with a, with a few other add-ons around. But um, we are starting to get a quite, a, quite, a, quite a lot of people sort of buying in the project and starting to use it all over the place, uh, mainly because of the open source uh, uh, so the, the access to the code makes it quite uh, interesting for people and mainly f and also for students. So the, the, the thing is actually the, the world of um, fisheries acoustic software is a, is a fairly small world. So we've got, we've got a few proprietary software that are made by um, either private company or by uh, research institutes. And those softwares are actually quite expensive as well. So a license of EcoView, for instance, if you want to buy it for a year, you're going to pay 25K. Uh, and Triple S is going to be this same, same sort of some sort of stuff. Movies 3D, I believe, is is um, is um, is free, uh, but but uh, uh, it only uses a very specific uh, data format, so that makes it unusable for for most for most other people. Um, so the, basically, the only open source software in fisheries acoustics, and that that's that's actually a bit a bit weird, really, because as we were saying before, I think that open source for scientific. Uh, software is, is sort of critical because you wanna, you wanna be, people need to be able to check that your code is doing what it's doing. And um, a reproducible, um, if you want people to reproduce your results, you wanna give them as many information of what you've done. So I don't trust documentation in that regard either. And so that's what I like about the agile development plan that you don't have to document it, you just have to make it work and then uh, people just figure it out for themselves, it's great. Um, but um, but um, that's the, so that's why we push for the for an open source approach in in our case. And um, there's also a project that's sort of uh, in which I'm involved as well. So it's sort of try to do the same that we've done um, in Python, which is which is a, which would be a, a good step forward. So that's a PyEcolab project that's sort of um, being developed in in several universities in the states and uh, in in Norway mainly. So basically, what what um, what what does ESP3 do for a living? So basically, it's just like it's a pretty technical software. So it does it does work um, on on the data itself, the the collected acoustic data. Uh, you have to know that we can on a survey we can collect from half a gig to ten terabytes of data. So that's that's um, that's an important 
part of the software that its um, its performance needs to be needs to be uh, uh, easily yeah scaling up to quite quite a large amount of data. So it's going to be doing the instrument calibration itself, and then we're going to be able, for instance, in the case of a uh, a survey dedicated to biomass uh, estimation, uh, it's going to take all the all the lines. It's going to run uh, all the what we call eco integration, and, and um, it's going to come up with this uh, number of of, um, of fish that uh, that you, you'll ignore later on. Um, we we also use it nowadays to do some um, pretty cool uh, spatial temporal uh, studies for changes in backscatter that we link to changes in the ecosystem or. Uh, what we observe from uh, other sort of remote, remote sensing with satellite, these sort of things. And um, we've been able to do those analyses of, over periods uh, longer than 10 years because we're starting to have a really, really uh, long time series of a certain area, so like the Chatham Rise in, in, uh, in New Zealand. Uh, nowadays also in the, in the in the current world, everyone uh, wants to know what's going into the atmosphere. So, and uh, there's actually uh, uh, quite a quite a bit of methane coming from the sea floors in some areas, so we're also uh, uh, using that to do the, those water column feature identification and extractions um, that we can also and we we do flux estimations based on those ones. So that's that's quite a, a broad a broad um, scale of of things to do for a for a, a, a one man band, uh, but uh, one day we we'll get there and it, it does work somehow. Um, where does it live? Um, as, as everyone, uh, it lives on a sort of a Git repository. In this case, uh, it's a Bitbucket uh, hosted. And um, because, as I was saying, we uh, interact a lot with biologists, there's also a, a more humanly use, usable part of it that's just a Windows installer that anybody can install um, on, a, on their laptop and, and that way they can play with their acoustic data uh, over the weekend. Um, so the, where, where we at, uh, we, we've actually um, managed to get a, a pretty decent user base, especially given the fact that the fisheries acoustics is a very small world. As we were saying, there's only three or four um, uh, professional softwares around. So we've got, but uh, that's what happens when you give a free product, people just go for it. Uh, and um, so about 50 to 100 users, uh, I've got contacted uh, in quite a lot of universities around the world that are quite happy to use it for, for their work. Uh, students are using it a lot doing for their masters, PhDs or um, those things. Um, over in two years, there's been yeah, over a thousand downloads, which is once again, could seem like, like not a lot, but it's given the small community that we have, that's, that's pretty, pretty good. And we're starting to run training courses for people who are interested. So that, that's, that's something that's giving us access to some sort of funding as well to keep doing what, what we're doing. Uh, so that's um, uh, the, the main motivation that we had was just, yeah, that's um, basically we wanted to replace our old analysis software because it was becoming uh, irrelevant and couldn't work exactly with the amount of data we're producing nowadays. Um, one other critical thing that we were a, we wanted to be able to keep the consistency in our uh, time series. So basically, um, we tried to use commercial softwares, and we couldn't get to closer than ten percent from our uh, from our previous results, which is actually also underlining the fact that when you don't have an open source software, you can actually pinpoint um, where you're di diverging from your uh, from from your results, which was a, a big big problem in our case. Um, so we, we sort of, that pushed us towards uh, building our own solutions once again. And, um, and at least it gives us complete control as well uh, over the, the code that we have and, and uh, we, don't, we don't rely on any external provider in that regard. Um, that also gives us the, the capacity to just keep uh, innovating and try new methods uh, and do cool stuff. So that's now. Um, the the initial motivation though was a, a bit of a, an accident. So um, I was sent down to Antarctica on a Tengara trip in 2015, and um, a, a, a friend and colleague in uh, in Scotland just gave me those three black box uh, written Simradi K80 on them, and uh, he's like, "Oh well, I've got those ones. They're really cool. They're the latest eco sounders around." Uh, 
just plug them in and collect data, that's going to be great. So I, I say, yes, I'll just plug them in. And the first time I try to open a file uh, with, the, with another software, it just crashed and couldn't give me anything. So I tried another other software, one of the one, of the one that was cited before. It didn't do anything either. So um, I got in touch with the manufacturer. He gave me, he gave me a, a data format description, and I started writing the software on the spot so that we could actually use the new sounders while we were going down in the road C. So it was kind of a, a matter of just let's make things work and, uh, and we'll see where we go. Um, so later on, as I was saying, we decided to make it our production tool and that's, that's, um, that's because we wanted to keep the consistency in our time series. So for instance, here at the, in the bottom right, you see a time series of thousand blue writing um, that we've been keeping since yeah, 1992. Um, you like those error bars because they're just huge, but that's, that's still sort of tracking along uh, pretty nicely for, for um, an acoustic survey over, over the sort of period of times. So we wanted to keep this consistency. Um, um, so we had to going from from the prototype to the uh, the production level we have to go through quite a few process like the redesign of the object tr structure um we had i had to spend a lot of time with biologists trying to to get um uh, to get an interface that was suitable for them to use so that they could actually interpret the visually the the nature of the marks properly um and then in March 2017, we finally got to a point where we could actually publish the code and make it available. Um, we went for an MIT license just because that's just like everyone does whatever they want and, and it's, it's, uh, it's not restrictive at all. Um, there's been a few people joining the project then in different universities. Uh, I've got a few colleagues in Germany who, are, who have been contributing since then quite, quite uh, happily. Um, and it's been, it's been going on. Um, we've started the process of trying to document things as much as we can. Um, and the best person to do it is not necessarily the, the developer. So um, we've, we've got a, some sort of an approach where I've got a colleague that will go over my code on, regular, on, a, on a regular basis and will actually add all the, the, the necessary comments that I haven't made during the process and will give it a good cleanup. So I don't know if it's a, the paired approach that we were talking about before, but it's sort of a, some sort of a two-step development. One um, where someone gets gets it to a level where it works, and 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 then there's a the, the cleaner comes behind, and it's probably the worst job ever. And um, and then we decided to make it available as a an, an installer for for um, for people as well. So how was it received since it was uh, openly published? So that's that's a number of. Um, of download of the installer over um, over a period of a month after the release. Uh, there's the two red bars are the conferences, the fisheries acoustics conferences that we go uh, to every year. And um, and as you're seeing, it looks like um, we've got a steadily increasing uh, amount of people, uh, if not using it, at least downloading it um, compared to the beginning. Uh, so we started from about 20 to, to reaching uh, over 100 once in a while. So I think, I think we, we are, I don't know if it's a success, but uh, people look at it. Oh, that's dark. Uh, how do we plan ahead? Uh, um, we like to pretend that we do plan. So we, we, we talk a lot with uh, the, um, the manufacturer uh, just to know what they've got in store for us so that we sort of know what we're gonna have to support for for formats and everything, and once in a while they've got a, uh, the one. Once in a while they actually tell us what they're going to do. Uh, one of the key things I found very, very useful uh, in my case has been to just uh, be very, very proactive in getting feedback from users. Uh, people don't always tell you when something doesn't work as they, it should, and they, they find workarounds all these sort of things. But if you act proactively look for feedback I, I found that I've, I've, I've got uh, I've been able to get really, really useful um, things from that uh, then we also try to keep an eye on the literature just some keep some sort of this 
a, a watch just to make sure that we are always uh, at the at the point of what we could do and uh and also we don't we don't we don't plan really uh, so we just like we are ready to take any route that that's uh given to us at some point or we open to a lot of ideas so that's 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 it so what does the money come from because that's that's also the problem with this sort of software like hillary was saying before it doesn't it's not because a lot of institutes are using your software and and that it saves them 20k a year uh, that they're going to be retransferring the, those 20k a year to your account so um basically we rely on some some of new call funding uh for some of, of what we do uh especially for for making sure that what we have is usable documented and, and uh, well maintained uh for new features we actually do that more on a project per project basis so for instance we've got quite a few uh small projects with other organizations like, like doc for instance where they come to us saying well uh, we'd like to do a survey on this lake but uh, there is um trouts in the middle of the phytoplankton layer so we'd, we'd run an automated process to remove those trouts and just get an index of phytoplankton over the next 10 years over the past 10 years um and in that case we just we just code that that for them and and um, we add that as a feature in the next release um and then there's all the exploratory work uh because as a fishery scientist i end up spending probably up to 20 weeks at sea a year uh i get even if you work 12 hour days, there's always 12 hour nights uh, uh, to, to do other stuff and on the ship, you don't have, uh, have a huge amount of um, prospects. So um, coding at sea does work really well. I think uh, everybody should be sent at sea for 20 weeks and we'd be a lot more productive. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the M fish plenary is for? Well, <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and then we've started uh, setting up training courses uh, so that we can actually uh, pay for our travels um, and, uh, and uh, a few beers at the pub afterwards. So if I had to do it again, um, um, what would I change? I would change the name. That's a horrible name. I just went from ESP2 to ESP3. That's just showing the less, uh, such a low level of imagery imagination but that's that's fine and also it's just like not easy to reference at all it's just like if you type esp3 in google you'll find all sorts of stuff it's going to be i don't know um i produced an installer um, earlier and that's probably just because the our some of our um, users are are not necessarily very tech savvy but more like uh, uh we've got a huge amount of uh, fish nodes I, I, um that that use that so that they want something easy to install just double click and that that works so um i would probably um make my git repository cleaner from the start so like like uh, we were talking before just making sure that i've got a development branch uh, a, ma a master branch that's got only the re stable releases uh every new features on the new branch that you merge later on those uh, i think yeah as as it's been um, noted several times today just the the guild management of projects is just such a lifesaver and uh it saves so much time that that i would be very careful to make it really clean from the early steps uh, and same again for unit testing so i would i would introduce those ones very very early so whenever i, I do some code now as much as possible uh even if it's not meant to become a huge project i try to introduce those those tests and and um and do a better git management from the start because you never know how things from from something that's that's was supposed to be just a quick data reader for an antarctic trip it ended up being a uh, a, a fairly bigger project what would i keep uh, so just but that's probably the abuse an, an obvious one for everyone just the the object oriented structure just makes everything so much easier to change and uh, to maintain and to 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 keep up to date with with, with new features, uh, the the graphical interface that we've chosen with a, with because of all the feedbacks that we've looked from the start with the users and biologists are, are also made made it quite a quite quite usable from the start. And uh, also, I, I also try to be as much uh, proactive as I can into looking 
what's out there in, in terms of technical choices. So uh, because we're dealing with fair amount of data in the, when you have to go through five terabytes of, of binary data, you want to really get something that's going to be working. And the other thing is that it needs to work on someone's laptop sometimes. So you, you have to go with memory mapping, uh, use basic GPU stuff. So, um, but there's a lot of really, really easy, uh, a lot of very good libraries out there that actually make it possible to do this sort of stuff on a, on a fairly small computer those days, which is fairly amazing. And um, once again, uh, I, uh, I underline the interaction with users that I, I find um, really uh, invaluable in, in general. Um, and the things I've learned in the process the, um, is that, uh, yeah, any minor change require complete testing and cross calibration. It's amazing what you can break with, a, with, with really nothing. And the, the amount of time where I'm like, oh, well, it's not going to change anything. That's fine. And no, it's, it's never fine. It's, it's just, bugs find a way of, of creeping on you. It's just, it's just like cancer. Um, but um, um, there's no such thing as an intuitive new feature either. It's just like, it's, it could be the most obvious thing to, to you, but, but uh, once you release it and give it to someone to, to play with, it's just like, it becomes something else completely. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, so um, once again, I try to, to pass the new features through a few people before I incorporate them into uh, a release or I'll make it a bit bigger. Um, there can be more than one valid results, but that's, that's more uh, in the sense that uh, um, as long as the documentation, I mean the scientific documentation is behind it to justify why those results are different, uh, those two approaches might be, might be um, might be perfectly valid in their own in their own uh, so it could be that over the over time your software gives very slightly different um, answers as long as they're justified uh, git is my best friend <laughs> it's really cool um and whatever i've coded six months ago makes no sense today if i've got if I have not commented it, it's, it's happening to me on a daily basis. I, I open a new file that I've coded a while ago and, and I'm like, wow, this guy is a genius or a retard. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and it was me. Were so, you a genius? Uh, no, more, more like the latter for in my case. But that's, 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 that's fine. So yeah, that's, that's about uh, what I have to share with you. So. Cheers. Okay, thanks. We have um, time for some questions. Any questions? Yeah. Hi, Evan. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed your talk. Uh, I was just wondering, because it's basically you and Pablo uh, working on ESP3, because it's open source, do you find that uh, having people able to view and download the software, do you get inundated with people asking for features or, I mean, I know it can be helpful if they find bugs and they offer fixes with a, you know, a pull request, but do you find it actually accumulates a lot of work just maintaining it? Uh, yeah, there's a, bit of, there's a bit of that, but um, I just ignore emails that I don't want to answer. <laughs> okay, um, any other questions? Okay, thank you.